Hey everyone, GJB2003 here, and today we're doing something a little bit different. Today we're actually going to be doing a figure review. Yes, this is the 2019 Safari Limited Carnotaurus. Just got this guy in the mail yesterday, and I am super excited. Um, I know that this guy is very controversial among the community, and today I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and opinions, and just kind of give you an overview. So, starting out with his, his details, we can see that he is very, very well sculpted. Lots of tiny little minute scales all around the body. Lots of nicely done osteoderms. Um, you can see the teeth are, well, they're there. They're not spectacular, but they don't really need to be. He's got, he's got lips, which is, I'll get to that later when I talk about accuracy. Um, you can see more of that. Nice detail coming down to the foot. You can see that the foot is very reminiscent of that of the Feathered T-Rex from 2017. But on mine, for some reason, I don't know if this is on anyone else's, because I've only seen one other review for this figure. Uh, but this toenail is really short and stubby. Uh, it's not a huge deal, but it's just kind of weird, honestly. You can see the really nicely toned musculature there. Uh, coming down, we've got the cloaca, more of those osteoderms, which do stretch onto the underside of the tail, which is definitely pretty interesting. Um, yeah, we can see more of those tiny, tiny little scales right there. Uh, little arms, definitely well done for how absolutely tiny they are. You can see how it looks next to my thumbnail, and oh my. Coming back up to the head, got a nice sort of ear hole over there, eye is well sculpted. These horns up top are exceptionally well done, and we come back up to that menacing looking frontward face. See some of the top detail there, and uh, yeah, overall I, I do really like the sculpted detail on this figure. Now, as far as the paint scheme is concerned, I have absolutely no complaints. This thing is just remarkably well painted. It looks so good. It looks so just organic. You can see that they got this bright fluorescent orange head up here, which just looks amazing, in my opinion. They did that super well. Um, and then we got sort of this foresty green, this really dark brown kind of come in a lattice pattern over here that's certainly an interesting design choice but I think it works really really well you can see some of that dark brown just kind of along the top and we got a pretty much just like a white underbelly it's pretty standard stuff as far as that goes but just overall the paint job on this is absolutely stunning um, even on the inside of the mouth there if you can see it it, it looks pretty good it looks pretty good indeed no real major bleeding complaints with it. Yeah, good paint job. Now, when we start to look at accuracy, we can really kind of see some of the complaints that people are having. The head sculpt, it's, the head sculpt looks fine to me, honestly. Um, it may be a little bit too bulky around the neck and kind of up here, but we don't really know how much flesh it would really have. The common presumption is that it was thin. Uh, it's not shrink wrapped, which I gotta give him props for. Safari always does really well on that, at least like 2017 and up. Uh, the fact that it has lips, it goes with a nice recent theory. I think it's a good, it's a good call on their part. It, it looks pretty good, and it definitely does, it does for this kind of a little bit what like the massive feathering on the 2017 Rex did, or the well what the pretty much everything did for the uh 2015 spinosaurus from collecta but to a much more minor degree <laughs> um the arms i think the arms look fine the hands do look a touch too large but i mean i think i think they look pretty fine it would probably be just a little bit too hard to sculpt it very much smaller than this i would imagine um if you look at other abelosaur figures, 
the, these hands are about the same size. Even if you look at something like the Papo Carnotaurus, you can really see that these arms are about the same size as its, but that figure is obviously in a smaller scale. Now, biggest accuracy issue comes with the legs and the feet. They're way too big. They should be... Uh, they should be pretty noticeably smaller, I'd say. Especially in the feet here down, it looks... I mean, it's not as bad as, like, some Papo figures, but... It's... it's noticeable. Especially more so from a distance. And the tail... Like a lot what Spider Dude Reviews said, it should be a bit kind of bulkier back here. Um, it looks like kind of a start cutoff point, like it doesn't flow very well there. This should just kind of gradually kind of come up, if if I were to imagine, because again, we don't have any flesh of this creature. But uh, as far as the length of the tail is concerned, it doesn't look to be too long or short, really. <laughs> and when I do this sort of bird's eye view of the thing, it really becomes apparent how bulky it is. Like the, this thing is—he's <laughs> thick. He's been—he's been eating a little too much, but um. Yeah, accuracy, it's it's not amazing as far as Safari is concerned, but it's not too awful as far as, um, you know, as far as most figures are concerned. If you look at a company like Papo or uh, Rebor, um, <laughs> this thing pretty much is on par with or better than just about anything they make. So... Not the most accurate figure, but not not an atrocity, as I've heard it called, for sure. Now, another common complaint I've heard with this thing is the size. The size does not bother me in the slightest. I think it's... I mean, I like that it's a little bit big, personally. I mean, I know that that doesn't quite fit in 140 scale, but it's not as big as a lot of people are really It's getting fussed over. It's... It's not extreme. If we bring in the Papo Carnotaurus, we can see that it is bigger, but it's not like gargantuanly bigger. It's it's a pretty good bit bulkier, and you can see the length difference is pretty apparent there. But these figures, like they, they look good next to each other. It looks feasible. Um, you can kind of see earlier if I can get this guy around what I was talking about with the arms. They're about the same size-ish. Safaris are a little bit bulkier. This That's a common theme with this figure. It's really bulky. But, I mean, it's... You can see here it's not gigantic, and I have a couple more figures to show it next to, also. Next up, I have a couple of larger figures, and this should really paint an image of that this guy's not, again, gigantic. Here is the Collecta Acrocanthosaurus from 2015. And here is the Papo Running T-Rex. I know that a lot of you guys likely have this one in your collection, which is why I chose it, and it's kind of just the standard for, like, a big theropod. So you can see now from this angle that he's the smallest of the three. He's still big, but he's a little bit smaller than the Collector Acrocanthosaurus over here, and he's a lot smaller than the Running T-Rex. If we line their tails up... It's about right. We can see that the Rex is considerably longer, about a head and neck longer. And as far as the height difference is concerned, um, yeah. So, he's, he's big, again, but definitely not as big as he could have been. And I think a lot of people would have complained if he were, say, the size of the Rebor one. Um, so, I... You can see there, um, he, he's a decent sized figure, he'll definitely pop out, partially because of his color scheme, but due in large part to his, uh, he, he, the fact that he's bigger. So, uh, final comparison coming up here. And here he is next to the 2010 Carnegie version of the Carnotaurus. And they're right around the same size. If, if you look if you look at him from a bird's eye view again, you can see that the Carnegie one is actually dimensionally a bit larger. This guy's definitely 
a lot bulkier. Again, that's kind of a thing with him. He's very, very thick. Um, you can see there that they're roughly the same length. Carnegie One's stance definitely makes it seem a lot taller. I mean, it is taller, but I mean, if we were to put him in a more standard stance, he'd probably look something like that. And again, you can see that they're right around the same size, so this guy will look really good next to your Carnegie Carnotaurus on on the shelves. He's he he's a really nice figure, as as you can see here. He's right about the same size as this older one. So yeah. So for my final thoughts on this figure, I I love it personally. Carnotaurus is one of my favorite dinosaurs of all time, really, and this is a very, very nice looking representation of it. It'll look good with your other Carnotaurus that you may have. It definitely stands out, for sure. And I think overall it's just a really nice looking figure, so uh, you can go pick this thing up on, I believe Everything Dinosaur is carrying it, and I know SafariLimited.com is. They're both going, for, or it's going for around $14 on each of those. Um, I wouldn't recommend getting it off Amazon. It's very overpriced there, uh, going for about 25 So, <laughs> yeah, that was my review on the 2019 Carnotaurus from Safari Limited. Uh, hope you guys liked it, and see you around.